Hi guys, hope you're all doing well. Welcome back to our series of Microsoft Graph. And in this video, we are going to talk about Delta queries, the fundamental behind querying only the changes which are implemented. Now, if you're watching the series from the beginning, in the last video, we have discussed about Microsoft Graph users and all the methods which are available, which you can adhere to in terms of creating a new user object or deleting or updating a particular user object. The agenda of this video will be knowing how to use Delta queries, what is the purpose of Delta endpoints and how to only get the updated attributes as a response from Graph API. So let's begin by knowing what is Delta query. The purpose of Delta query is to only retrieve the changes which are implemented in terms of getting new objects created, getting any object updated or getting any object deleted. In a typical scenario, the endpoint that you will access will be graph.microsoft.com forward slash v1.0 forward slash your resource type, which can be user, group or messages or anything which exists in the metadata or which can be accessed. But the question comes that every time you go to this particular endpoint, you'll get the list of all the users that exist in a particular directory. So think about a scenario that my application made a request to this particular endpoint, which is graph.microsoft.com forward slash v1.0 forward slash user. And I got a list of 50 users. Now, before I make my second request to this particular endpoint, let's say there are five more users created. Now, the second request which I will make to the same endpoint will list 55 users now the question comes, I only need the list of new five users. I don't need the list of all the users because I already have 50 users available in my database. Now this is the entry point for you to know why you should use Delta query. Okay. Now all you have to do is the first request that you are sending to a specific endpoint with the resource type, just add this keyword called Delta. And now let's understand how exactly it is going to work or why you should implement this particular feature in your application. Think about a scenario wherein I have a typical application which will get the user authenticated. Now what I can do is I can actually decrypt the token which the user has received and then I can get a basic claim set which I can use in my application to perform the respective tasks. But the fact is that Let's say my application needs all the attributes for this particular user. So what will happen? I will reach this particular endpoint with this user's UPN and this is what I will get in response if I am using v1.0 endpoint. Okay. Now what I can do is I can use this as a reference point and I can create an object in my local database that belongs to my application. Okay, but now what we have to understand that let's say my application has a logic that every time the user is getting authenticated, I have to query this information. Now think about a scenario wherein every time you are getting this information, it is too much tedious or it's something which is not even required for your application to do so that it should match each and every attribute every time you're querying this particular information. Now think about a scenario wherein you are not getting all the attributes, but the next request that you have made in that particular request, only display name is listed. That means only the updated attribute is listed. Now in this case, the match operation will have less frequencies of request as you're only going to match the display name with the current name and you'll get it updated. Okay, that's the purpose behind using Delta queries. And if your application is highly scalable, this is something which you must implement for different resources type because the response that you will get from Microsoft Graph would be much more organized. Okay, now let's see all this in action when it comes to resource type. Now to see how all this works, what I'll do is I'll switch to my browser where I'm signed into Graph Explorer and here exactly I'm going to represent how the Delta queries work. Okay. Now think about the same scenario which I was explaining. 
Think about a scenario wherein your application accesses this particular endpoint, which is users, or let's say I'm going to query a particular user, which is graph at the rate concepts work.com and I do run query. As you can see, every time I reach this endpoint, this is the exact value which I get with each response. And trust me, all the attributes are not even required if you are doing an update operation or if you're trying to update the attributes of a particular user in your database. Now the question comes how to fix it or how to get only the appropriate results. Let's begin by knowing how you should do it for a particular resource type. So let's say I go to users and I'll click on run query. Now this is the typical response which I will get always. That means I will get the complete list of all the users and the attributes that can be queried by default. Now what I will do is I will update this particular endpoint to go to Delta. I'll add this keyword as I've shown you in the deck and this is what I will get in response now. Now this is the main section which you have to focus on which will act as a reference point for you to query only the changes. As of now, what I have done, I have reached this endpoint of user just by adding this keyword called Delta. That means as of now, I have got all the results of all the users that exist in my directory. But the fact is that next time when I reach this particular endpoint, I should only get the updated values. Okay, to show you all the things in much more organized way, I'll use the B endpoint because by default, all the attributes are not exposed with B1.0. Now, the next step I'm going to do is I'm going to update some attributes for different users. So let's say I go to this particular user, which is named as fair. And what I'm doing is I'm changing the job title of this particular user. And let's give him a title of, let's say, CISO and I'll save this particular change. Now, as of now, I have updated an attribute named as job title for a particular user named as fair. Now, what I'll do is I'll update a different attribute for a different user. And this time, let's choose, let's say, employee ID. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to update this value, which is employee ID as one, two, three, four, five, six, and I'll save this particular value as well. So as of now, two users are updated, Fair and George, and there are two attributes which are updated, which were employee ID and job title. Now, if you guys remember, this is the link which we have received from our previous response. What I have to do is now instead of going to Delta link, which was here. Instead, I will go to the link which I received in my previous response because this is the reference point which you have to reach to only query the changes. Now, the moment I will do run query, as you can see, only two user objects are getting listed. The one which were updated, George and Fair. Now, the question comes that if you guys remember, in a nutshell, we don't even need all these attributes. So the question comes, how should I get only the updated attributes? For that, all you have to do is you have to add a particular key value and that is prefer and the value should be return equal to minimal. That's all you have to do in the request that you are sending, return equal to minimal. Now, if I'll save this value and now if I'll do run query, as you can see, I'm only getting the list of updated values. Now, ID and created time will be available in each and every response. And this is something which is by design. Now, this is how things work out when it comes to resource. Okay. But the fact is that if we go by the option which we were discussing in our deck when we were talking about querying the user things are slightly different now let's see how it works okay think about a typical scenario wherein you got your user authenticated now the question comes the moment you will decrypt the token of this particular user you can get the object id from there and you can apply a filter wherein only the information for this particular user should be queried now, as of now, Delta endpoints only accept advanced query of filter value. That's it. 
no select no value no other no other advanced queries is as of now supported so all you have to do is you have to reach this particular endpoint which is delta with a filter query and this is what you will get in response so what your application has to do now that next time when this user logs in instead of going to this particular link go to this link and you will only get the updated value and how to achieve this particular state by using a specific header value which is prefer return minimal that's all you have to do okay so now let's see how it works in a nutshell okay what i will do is i will try to query a particular user object with the filter query because that's something which is as of now supported and i will do run query let's remove this as of now otherwise we will not get the required information so as you can see this is what i'm getting now the question comes the limited response is because it's v1.0 so i'll do v9 point and i should get all the list of different attributes okay now let's say i'm going to update a particular value for this particular user let's say employ id itself so this user was graph okay so i'll go to this particular user which is graph and now i will try to update a particular attribute for this user let's say employ id and let's give it a value 7897 and i will save this value now the next thing that i have to do is i have to copy this link this delta link which we have to reach to only query the changes okay and the moment we'll reach this particular endpoint only this particular user will get listed but the issue is again you'll get all of the values okay so that means what simply getting to this endpoint for a specific user will not at all make sense so whenever you are using a specific user query always add this key which is prefer equals to return equal to minimal that's all you have to do and then you will only get the required attributes which are updated now the moment i will do run query i should only get the employee id value which is updated so in a nutshell this is how the delta queries work and the fact is that you can choose any object type to get this link generated which you should access next time so that you should only get updated okay now as we move along with the playlist i will be showing you how to operate all these different resources type because every resource type has different way of getting listed and different attributes so this was all about knowing how the delta endpoints work now let's check the step-by-step -step process which your application can do to get to this particular result the very first thing is get your user authenticated decrypt the token read the object id value query the specific object by using filter advanced query get the odata link cached in your application and next time when that user logs in just navigate to that particular link and you will get the updated values so let's talk about a quick summary of what all we have discussed in this video we have discussed about how to run delta endpoints query what are the different attributes that get listed which header you should use in the next video we'll going to talk about Microsoft Graph Groups. So if you think this channel is helping you to learn something new, please feel free to share this with your technical community and feel free to subscribe. Thank you so much. Thanks for your time. Bye-bye.